up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony as you new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 toyota 4runner courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because of course the legendary reliability i'm not sure if there is a more reliable suv out there right now than the toyota 4runner also this thing also has legendary off-road capability as well to go along with that you do also get two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance that's going to save you some money there as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing it's uh, as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 forerunner first one being the sr5 starting at forty thousand four hundred and fifty five dollars which by the way is a one thousand six hundred and fifty dollar price bump from the 2023 model year there trd sport for forty three thousand three fifteen sr5 premium which is the one we are in today starting at forty three thousand five fifteen trd off-road starting at forty four thousand three hundred dollars limited starting at forty nine thousand six ninety then you have the trd pro starting at $54,920 and so all of those trim levels but the TRD Off-Road and TRD Pro come standard with rear wheel drive. There's two trim levels then that I mentioned, of course, come standard with four wheel drive, but you can add four wheel drive to any of those other trim levels. If you wanted to do that, simply add $2,035 to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the 4Runner is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a four liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 270 horsepower, 5,600 RPM, 278 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM, Power sent to the rear wheels or all wheels through a five speed automatic. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately eight seconds flat, with MPG numbers coming in at 16 in the city, 19 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. So now that I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the runner here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Forerunner here up to speed. All right, here's our straightaway in three, two, one, go. Okay quick off the line for sure <laughs> that's not bad dude that doesn't feel like zero to 60 in eight seconds that feels like zero to 60 in seven at least that was really really nice so i feel like in today's time i test drive so many turbocharged engines that there's always some sort of turbo lag at the very beginning but the cool thing about naturally aspirated engines and naturally aspirated v6 here in the forerunner is it's an instant acceleration like there's no delay whatsoever you hit the gas you go that is freaking cool man i miss that i miss naturally aspirated engines not only that of course with naturally aspirated engines they're a heck of a lot more reliable than their turbocharged counterparts as well so that is why probably these things go easily over 300,000 miles just check a consumer reports magazine these are one of the most reliable suvs out there and they're fun that was a plenty of an acceleration emerging onto the highway but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so as expected you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes that do come standard on the forerunner as far as s 60 0 stopping distance goes that comes in at 127 feet pretty much par for the course as far as numbers go as far as the braking feel goes it's fine definitely no issues there it feels just right a little bit on the firmer side of things which i love so definitely not a soft braking feel here in the forerunner so big fan of that absolutely no issues with the braking then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back four link with lateral rod rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but let me tell you guys there are so many different options in terms of suspension components when it comes to the forerunner really dependent upon the trim level so for example you got an x-ray sport enhancement suspension that comes with the trd sport and the limited essentially what that is is more or less an adaptive damping suspension it monitors each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections giving you a smoother ride but it's also going to tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering giving you better handling as well so really giving you the best of both worlds that's probably what i would consider personally but there's also a kinetic dynamic suspension system which is optional for the off-road trim levels only so that's going to certainly help you out with some off-roading if you plan on doing any of that box high performance shocks coming with the trd pro there's a torsen limited slip differential for the limited four-wheel drive model then there's a locking rear differential for all the trd trims and then trd tuned front springs specifically for the trd pro so plenty of off-road capability like i mentioned at the very beginning 
timing of the video really depended upon the trim level that you go with. So if you do plan on taking the runner off-road, definitely go with one of those trim levels that give you more of the off-road suspension components for sure. But overall, as far as ride quality goes, I've had no issues in my short little test drive here today. Hagerstown's got some pretty darn smooth roads, but still, having said that, I don't have any issues. So as far as steering feel goes, it does tend to weight a little bit more on the heavier side of things, which I personally love. So definitely not a loose steering feel as you a lot of times we'll find an SUV. So I personally love the steering feel on the 4Runner. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going, I don't know, 33 miles per hour or something like that right now. I personally don't have any issues with it. It might be a little bit noisier than some of the uh, more luxury-esque uh, competition maybe, but honestly for me, I don't have any issues there. Touching on visibility, because of the shape of the 4Runner, you definitely should not have any issues with rear visibility. I can see perfectly fine out the back because it's more of a boxy shape, of course. And one of the best parts about that rear visibility is there's actually a button located just behind the shifter that opens and closes that rear window as well. So that is something the 4Runner is known for. I love that feature. It definitely gives you a better view out of that rear window. I can imagine myself driving to Assateague Island on the beach, backing it up to the ocean, opening up that rear window and just having the best view possible. So that is a pretty darn cool feature of the 4Runner. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Toyota 4Runner. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Toyota 4Runner finished in ice cap. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had today, but pretty cool color name actually, if you ask me. But there is a new color for the TRD Pro that is called Tear. It's kind of a brownish color. And there's a couple color deletes for the 2024 Forerunner Runner as well. It's going to include Lunar Rock and Lime Rush. I think I actually reviewed the Lime Rush one last year, if I remember correctly. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Forerunner is made. Taking a look at the VIN. First character is the letter J, indicating that the Forerunner is still built and assembled in Japan. Gotta love it. But let's go ahead and start up front. Full LED headlights do come standard on all trim levels across the board for added illumination. I love that unique front grille for the TRD Pro, of course. You get some added chrome accents for the Limited. That's kind of the luxury-esque trim level of the 4Runner. Front skid plate that covers the engine and suspension that comes standard on all trim levels across the board. The TRD Sport that I reviewed last year, you actually do get a hood scoop with that one. That is the only trim level that you got a hood scoop with. So I love the hood scoop on the 4 runner i think that looks absolutely amazing do you also get automatic feature for the headlights that come standard on all trim levels across the board you get led daytime running lights of course but you do also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so very convenient feature there and you got to love the led fog lights down below and that also comes standard on every single trim level across the board so I love that as well. But anyways, I think it still looks good up front. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so we're now making our way to the side of the 4Runner here. Roof rails do come standard on all trim levels across the board. You do get a TRD roof rack for the TRD Pro trim level only. Rear privacy glass coming standard for all trims. You do have the trim level badging found on the C pillar. That is something that the 4Runner does. I think it's pretty darn cool. So if you're ever curious what trim level you are looking at, simply look at that C pillar. Ours says SR5, but we do have the SR5 Pro Premium, but nonetheless, I like seeing that there. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals for the SR5 trim level and up. That's how you get the integrated turn signals at least. Running boards are going to be optional for all trims. We do have uh, one of those options. There's actually a couple different kinds of running boards too. So yeah, we do have some black ones down below there. Take a look down at the wheel setup then. 20 inch alloys for the TRD Sport trim level only. However, all other trim levels are going to get different variations of 17 inch alloys. So they're going to vary in design a little bit, but 17 inch alloys being what you guys are looking at right now but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now climbing back into the tall grass for you guys here we're spoiler with an integrated brake light up top does come standard rear window wiper and you guys are going to be wondering where is the rear window wiper because it's not affixed to the rear, rear glass let me show you guys if you can see that there there is a rear window wiper tucked up underneath of that rear spoiler that is where it's going to be located of course because the rear window does open and close so we can't have it asphyxiated to the rear glass for that reason, of course. But LED tail lights do come standard for added illumination at night. That's for all trim levels. You got to love that. If you're curious about the towing capacity, because you guys can see we got the towing connector down there. 5,000 pounds is the max towing capacity for the 4Runner. Then tucked away underneath on that passenger side there, you will find a single exhaust outlet. So 
Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here, as always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so we're now making our way to the back of the 4Runner. When it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is going to be a manual tailgate coming standard for all trim levels. But what's opened up as far as cargo capacity goes, I will say there is an optional third row available for this one. It is rare, but if you happen to get one of those, 9 cubic feet is what that's going to come in behind that third row, so not a ton of space. But behind the second row, 47.2 cubic feet, and with all rears folded, 89.7 cubic feet. That's a ton of space. That's more space than the Highlander, more space than the Pilot, the Palisade, the Telluride. I could probably go on and on, but that is definitely a good bit of space for an SUV, but you will find a 12 volt power outlet back there. There's also a 120 volt power outlet for all trim levels. So if you were to park this thing on a beach, you can actually hook up a toaster maybe in the morning, make some toast or whatever on the beach. I don't know, but that's pretty cool. Grocery bag hooks back there. There's some chrome plated tie down anchors as well. And then a cargo cover is going to be optional there's a good bit of kind of storage found in the corners there as well but then make our way up to the rear leg room we don't have the third row configuration today but that's going to come in at 29.3 inches so around the same as my old ford mustang gt so almost unusable there but second row leg room coming in at 32.9 inches but for reference I believe even six feet tall, definitely didn't have any issues with rear leg room with myself sitting in those rear seats there, but rear ventilation does come standard. You gotta love that. Dual rear USB charging ports also coming standard so your kids can stay charged up in the back there. You gotta love that. And there is a rear center armrest with cup holders also back there and front seat back knitted pockets then as well. But then make your way up to the front seats. Power adjustable front seats with power lumbar coming standard. Cloth seating is gonna come standard, but then a soft text upholstery for all other trim but the limited because the limited is going to give you a perforated leather of course heated front seats coming on the sr5 premium trim level and up ventilated front seats them for the limited and overall as far as seat comfort goes it was actually perfectly fine i definitely didn't have any issues with seat comfort um in my short little test drive here today so big fan of that then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for every single trim level across the board and then it heated steering wheel is going to be optional we got that option that button's located just by the driver's right knee so definitely keeping me warm on this 20 degree day here in Hagerstown but anyways then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your Toyota logo on the one side on the other side lock and unlock pretty basic key there but it is all keyless entry with the push button start so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button kind of located just by the driver's right knee again but once started up tachometer is on your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display there are some steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel there gives you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's of course trip a trip b there's actually a digital speedometer you can choose to display that if you wanted to there's some steering angle statistics that is pretty cool a bunch of safety features as well so pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to come standard on the limited and the trd pro optional otherwise another option we got so we do have that power mooner if i love it overhead sunglass holder coming standard for all trim levels dual zone climate control for the limited and trd pro trim levels home light controls for the premium trim levels and up and that's for up to three different garage doors is found just by the uh, interior lighting up front here wood trim accents are going to come standard on the limited otherwise you're going to kind of get this brush stainless steel look although it is plastic but it looks all right i don't have any issues there just in front of the shifter you're going to get a little bit of rubberized storage you got one single cup holder there 12 volt power outlet usb charging port as well just kind of to the right of the shifter you got another cup holder probably a little slot to put yourself in there that's also where your heated seat buttons are going to be located if your vehicle is equipped along with that button for the rear power window there and within the center armrest there is a ton of space in here absolutely ton of space and there's a 12 volt power outlet actually as well so very uh practical interior quality nothing fancy a lot of plastic and uh black finishes but overall it gets the job done but so now making our way to the infotainment screen here eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard for all trim levels bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay 
factory navigation system is gonna come on the SR5 premium trim level and up. That's what you guys are looking at right there. You can check out some weather information out there if you wanted to, along with your radio information. And so the standard sound system for all trim levels, but the limited is gonna be an eight speaker sound system. However, that limited trim level is gonna give you a 15 speaker JBL sound system. So having said that, we do got the eight speaker sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning and Let's test out the clarity of this one. It's okay. It's actually not bad. I would say it's above average. I'll put it that way. So it fills up the space plenty fine. There's an okay amount of bass, pretty good. Above average again. Uh, the clarity is pretty good as well. So they probably could have put a six speaker sound system in here. It's what a lot of the competition does. So the fact that they put eight speakers in the Forerunner is pretty cool. So I don't have any issues with that. If you really like music, obviously go with the limited. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Forerunner in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the highest quality rear view camera, but it does take up the whole screen, which I can't always say. And then a 360 degree monitor is going to be optional, which is always is going to lead us into safety and so front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard of course toyota safety sense that gives you pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert and dynamic radar cruise control and then the limited trim is going to add to all that front and rear parking sensors and so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Forerunner, you do have legendary off-road capability. Again, dependent upon the trim level that you go with. Incredible reliability as well. That's really what the Forerunner is still known for, of course, to this day. Plenty of cargo space. Like I said, it's more than the Palisade. It's more than the Highlander, more than the Pilot. So more than most of the competition. So I like that. I would personally, if I were to pick a trim level on the Forerunner, I'd probably get the TRD Sport for two reasons specifically one you get that awesome looking hood scoop i love that and the x-ray of suspension so that's going to give you the very smoothest ride of all of the forerunner trims but it's also going to give you better handling as well it's not necessarily going to be the most off-road capable but i don't go off-roading all that much so that one would be the one for me but also love the rear window in the forerunner the fact that it opens and closes is so unique especially to its class i can't think of another suv besides maybe the lexus version of this that actually does that so i love that as far as room for improvement goes obviously the fuel economy is not going to be the best i think i maybe uh, i'll let you guys know what did i average i averaged around 15 miles per gallon it's lower now because the car has been idling for a while but obviously you're not going to get the best fuel economy but let me know what you guys think of the forerunner in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching if you're free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on this channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold